as I've moved away from modeling and, and you know, grown in my career, I've realized that actually it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. What matters is how I feel. I'm Padma Lakshmi and I am a rookie for the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit 2023. Whenever young women ask me questions about, you know, what makes you feel beautiful or how do you look your best, it's never really what you look like, it's what you feel like inside. And if you feel supported, you feel nurtured, you feel like yourself, that's when you're going to look the most beautiful, in my opinion. That's when you're going to carry yourself more comfortably. That's when you're going to be free. That's when you're going to be your whole sensual self. That's really what I think this shoot is about. It's about celebrating women and celebrating their relationship to their bodies and that, you know, all bodies are beautiful, that you just have to feel good in them and honor them. What I hope that people take away looking at the photos and, you know, also anything I say in this interview is that I really thought that the Sports Illustrated ship had sailed for me or the possibility of it and I'd never done it before. But I'm 52 years old and I have never felt better about myself. And yes, my thighs may have been leaner and my boobs were probably slightly higher, you know, in earlier parts of my life, but I wouldn't go back to my 20s if you paid me all the money in the world. I love where I am in my life and no, my body's not perfect by any means, but I don't care. I feel beautiful. I feel like I have a very lucky, and fruitful, productive life. And I hope that that's what they see when they see these pictures. I hope they see a full woman in all my facets and nuances and also some contradictions. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. And what was Little Padma like? I was an only child and when I was going to my grandparents' house, I would get into mischief, but I was very quiet so you wouldn't know. And I was always hanging out in the kitchen with my grandma and the aunts in my family. They're the ones who taught me how to cook. I used to climb the shelves when I was really young, like four, three, five. And I loved Indian spicy pickles. So while other kids were craving Cadbury's and sweets, I was craving chilies and mango pickle or lime pickles. I was bullied, not in high school, but in eighth grade. You know, I would just run home from school. They used to call me giraffe. They used to call me blackie giraffe. They used to call me dictionary because, you know, I spoke well, I don't know. There are many moments in my life where I haven't loved my body, but I was this tall in eighth grade and I had really skinny legs. And because I roller skated and climbed trees, I felt really self-conscious about my legs and I would never wear shorts. After the age of 12, I didn't start wearing shorts again till college because I thought my legs were too skinny. I now, of course, see it as the insecurities of that person more than me. In the 80s, I did not see a single Indian person or Pakistani person or any South Asian person on TV. I didn't have many people to look to. People did come to me and ask me if I would model when I was 17. And my mother said, I don't want you to do it. And I know you're probably mad at me, but if you're pretty at 17, you'll be more pretty or beautiful at 21 or 22. And, you know, she was right. I'm so thankful that I had that kind of guidance and support around me. I'm happy to report that, you know, when I'm trying to catch a cab or now an Uber in New York, young women or young girls will come up to me and say, you know, you're the only South Asian woman I saw on TV. You're the only brown woman that I ever saw. And that just made the world of difference to me. And it's so important because I didn't have that. And I know what that feels like. I got the scar when I was 14 and I became very good at even, you know, sitting kind of like this casually so people wouldn't, it wouldn't be the first thing people noticed about me when I was, you know, meeting them for the first time. I was really, really sensitive about it. I, I felt shy about it. I was embarrassed by it. It was a lot more red and livid than, you know, the keloid was raised. And um, so to have a modeling agent say, no, that's okay you know, was life-changing for me. And I was studying, so I was like, oh, I'm not gonna ruin my GPA in the last semester. And then they told me what I could make, and I was like, maybe I can. 
I always loved writing and uh, I used to write for my high school newspaper and I always loved to cook and so I took the recipes I normally like to cook and I took the fat out of them I just made them more healthy and that is how my first cookbook came out. I got my uh, first job in America at the Food Network because I was on book tour with my first cookbook and um, they asked, they kept asking me to come back. It's embarrassing and I feel weird, but yes, Top Chef has been nominated, I believe, for 37 nominations for the Emmys and we've won twice. Our show just wrapped its 20th season. And so to still be recognized in that way, I mean, most shows don't last 20 seasons on television. So I'm very, very lucky. And this summer I got my first James Beard Award for Taste the Nation. Uh, which is the show that I created and is about immigrant food and culture. And it is a product of everything I've ever felt. It is my love letter to the people who really built this country, often with their bare hands. I learned a very important lesson as a young woman, that beauty is really arbitrary and so is fashion. And what's important is that you feel beautiful no matter what, and that you understand that sometimes your, I'm not gonna even say weaknesses, your obstacles and overcoming them can often be your strength. And I think that I feel more beautiful now because I hold that strength and I hold the experience in my flesh, in my person and in my spirit. That's really made me who I am. We're in this very unique and difficult time in our culture where we're youth obsessed and we have a very slim, narrow notion of not only what is beautiful and appealing, but what is acceptable. It's almost like people feel guilty about, you know, feeling that that person is, is uh, sexually alluring because somehow they should be serious now or they should be above that or, you know, why do you need to do this? You know, as I said, I get a lot of those prudish comments. And the truth is, I love being a woman. I love my body and I love expressing myself artistically. And if I can use my body as an instrument to do that, Great, I'm gonna do that before it's too late. But I'll tell you what, at 52, it ain't too late. I mean, think about it, think about it. I'm doing Sports Illustrated for the first time at 52. If you would have told me that at 22 or even 32, I would have been like, no way. You know, for a long time, honestly, I didn't think I would ever be in Sports Illustrated because I didn't see people who look like me, you know? And this, that's only changed in the last several years. And thank God that MJ has, you know, and her team have, you know, affected that change. I want everybody to see this pictorial and understand sometimes a whole new phase that's even more exciting than anything you've ever experienced before can happen well over 40. And I am living my best life right now. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm the most serene, the most comfortable in my body and in who I am that I've ever been. And I'm content and my career is going better than it ever has. So I'm here to tell you that the best is yet to come after 40. I would never wanna go back to my youth. Why? I'm having so much more fun now and I'm ha I have so much more freedom and liberty now to be who I really am and live in my skin and most importantly enjoy that. Because if you're enjoying it, then that's all that matters. It's a wrap! <laughs>